You're totally going to stay in the shot, aren't you? I've really got to record this. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I guess Luna's just going to stay in shot. She really doesn't care that I'm filming at this point. Not even in the slightest. So, uh, this is just a really quick video vlog update sort of thing. And uh, welcome. I am Mario the Artisan Rogue. For those of you that don't know who I am. Uh, okay, so as far as Inktober, I have actually managed to keep up with it. And I'm really happy with it. There were a few days that I fell behind. But as of this today, which is the 21st, I am caught up. I just submitted the... I just uploaded the latest one that I did right now. And I'm really pretty pleased. There were some that I wouldn't say I necessarily phoned them in, but I had worked faster and had done things a little bit more, you know, just in general, in, in a quicker sense and, and much more simplistic, maybe a little more loose than I would have liked. But the point for this year really was for me to just get them done, to prove that I was able to get these things in a concerted effort completed, you know, and, and I'm I'm only like 10 days away from getting this completely done so I'm really hoping that I can hold it together and do this I don't see why I wouldn't be able to I know that on some of the groups you know like the Inktober group uh, that I belong to online there's a lot of people that have either just given up or they stopped or they were struggling with certain ones and you know the thing is is that yeah traditionally you kind of want to go along with it and and stay in line and do what you can but again emphasizing on that last bit do what you can you know even if you started out and you didn't finish big deal you tried you know I, I know that a lot of people can get critical about it and one of the few things that drives me nuts about this is anything that gets listed online especially when it's a concerted group effort if failure or whatever somebody deems to be failure begins to occur then it just falls by the wayside and people get disappointed they get angry um, one of the things I've been seeing people do, unfortunately, is they've been taking Jake Parker's Inktober list and kind of crossing through and then like a big X across the rest of them saying, I just give up or something. And that's great. And I understand that. I mean, social media has kind of turned it into something where when we quit something, there are some people that want to announce it really loudly. And if it makes them feel better, great. I try not to pay too much attention to it, if only because, you know, I'm struggling with my own things, trying to get through it and and anybody that does post, I make sure I give it a thumbs up, a like, whatever I can, just so they can know that somebody's acknowledging, hey, you're trying, you're doing good things. I may not always leave a comment, but I do try and make sure that everybody at least gets some acknowledgement of their work being put up on there. So, uh, yeah, it has definitely over overall helped my productivity. And, uh, oh, focus was another thing. There was a there was a great YouTube video that I watched where a fellow talked about how he had gone through not only myriad bouts of depression but other things like that that he wasn't sure how he was going to overcome those things and one of the things he found was that if he threw himself into something no matter how OCD it seemed or how detail oriented it got if he threw himself into it he was able to shut off bits of the depression now it wasn't a cure all it wasn't anything where it got helped him get over his anxiety completely but it did um it, it it did allow him to go ahead and move forward and complete other things now, now the in regards to art this definitely helped me because i was initially I, I got a really strong start on this and then about probably day 10 or 11 i was starting to struggle my drawings are only taking about 15 20 minutes each on average to complete um at least the inking part the drawing part is probably another additional 15 minutes or so so 30 minutes out of my day per drawing thereabouts but i also take the time to film it and uh, I, I just went real low-key with it i just i have an old iphone that i use as a backup camera that i can throw up there and it's not in the way i didn't decide to use the dslr with this and um i put that up there and would just do time-lapse recordings so that was another way that i felt you know if i felt like i wasn't getting these done i was remembering you know you really made a concerted effort to get 31 drawings down and so so far i've been able that that's been another thing that made me stick to this so um yeah and something else that has helped because um sometimes it gets to be a little crazy trying to like these phones are the lower end like the phone i currently use and then this one they all have smaller amounts of memory on them and i'm bringing up this little piece of tech uh for those of you guys that have never seen this i don't know how good this is going to show up right now but this is called the hypercube i'm going to do a full review of this this is one of the 
nuttiest little things. I didn't, I'll be honest, when I backed this on Kickstarter, I didn't know if this was ex going to do exactly what I wanted it to do. What this is, and most of you have probably already figured it out just by looking at the form factor of it. Um, it, uh, it does plug in via USB. It's essentially a memory stick. Um, I have a micro SD in here and uh, it is a, uh, man, watch me break the damn thing getting it out. It is a uh, 32 gigabyte class 10, which is, you know, that's the speed. And um, it's got both, it's got two charging ports and one communication port on here. So what happens is, and as you guys can probably guess, you take a USB port, you plug it into your phone. Now you have to have an app on your phone, your iPad, whatever d digital device you have that you're backing up to this, be it Android or Apple or whatever. And what this does is it allows you to basically have, use this like a Dropbox. It's just like a local drive. You're not updating to the cloud. You're not doing anything else like that. And I know that I consistently run out of space. I'll be maybe filming a small segment. I'll be doing some B-roll shots or something. And on the fly, I can plug this into any one of my USB ports here on my desk or over on my work desk or something like that. Or if it comes down to it and I'm out in the field or I'm out somewhere else, I always carry a battery pack with me, plug this in, and then I can plug in my phone here. So it simultaneously charges, and that's how you know that it's actually connecting and reading to the device. And a small blue light lights up here. You're only really limited by the size of the media card you put in there. You can also optionally put a USB drive on this side of some kind. I think even an external, like an SSD or something like that, you could plug that in there if you wanted to. And it just, it's basically just a communication port to be able to allow the phone to upload through this device onto whatever other media you want to back it up. I think this is an amazing little device. I was a little surprised by how well made it was, but again, I'll go more into this. I keep talking about this. Okay, moving on. So the next thing, oh yeah, my online store. If you guys have a chance to swing by my online store, a few people had talked about how, okay, why was it that I still had some of my out of stock stuff listed on there. Well, part of that was because I wanted an archive of sorts. I did heed what a lot of you were saying, and I went ahead and I moved some of that stuff over into an archive. There's a few on, on the store that are still live that have like one edition left in the run. And at some point in time, they'll move over, they'll migrate over. There's another area that of course is the uh, publications. It's just got two comic issues in there right now. So, um, but as, aside from that, that's what's going to be on there. I don't have a whole bunch of, of other stuff that I was going to talk about right now. I know there's other things I need to cover, but I have been filming some other equipment reviews and some other things like that, that I've been working on. I've got a few more interviews that I've got to finish editing and one I've got to send out, uh, to get done for the interview section for the creative interview section on my website. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm Brian Gordon from Foul Language. If I didn't announce that this last, I don't think I did this last time. I think he only recently agreed to do this. Um, he agreed to be one of the people that was going to be interviewed. And if I have said this already, I'm sorry. But for anyone that's new, that's one of the interviews that will be coming up. I've just got to finish writing the damn thing. My mind is just kind of scatterbrained all over the place. Oh, I can add this real quick. Ba, ba, ba. So there was a, an opportunity I had at the Bebog Salon. Yes. I think my cat has a cold. She really needs to go to the vet. Um, and I need to, I need to, I need to do something about that. Um, I had an opportunity recently where, okay. So long story short, I don't know if I've ever told this story before or not. I may have in an older podcast or, or video. I don't know. Uh, many years ago, I had the opportunity to do an open mic stand up uh, where I wanted to, I, I had always aspired to be a stand up comedian. And the very first time I ever did it, it was horrible. And, um, and, and, and it was not a memory I ever really relish reliving, but I did get an opportunity recently to do some spoken word. At first, I didn't really know if I was going to go completely through with it. And thankfully, you know, I performed three, no, it was four pieces total. And um, it went really well. It did kind of push me into a zone where I thought, you know, maybe <laughs> for a buddy of mine, uh, Craig Klotz, he, he runs the Free State shows. He did make a really funny comment about how maybe there's, Maybe there's something there between doing um, stand-up comedy and poetry. Maybe that's a whole other genre, which is really not a bad idea, Craig. That's that's maybe that's something I explore. I'm not sure. Didn't plan on doing another video until the end of October, but I didn't want a month to go by where I hadn't done a vlog post of some sort. And uh, I've had picked up a few more subscribers on YouTube as well, so that's really exciting and really happy. 
So if you're on YouTube and I haven't said hello to you, hello and thank you for following me on YouTube and uh, that sort of thing. So have a good night, guys. I am Mario the Artisan Rogue. If you'd like to follow me, I am on Twitter and on YouTube and on a lot of other social media. Just Google the Artisan Rogue. You can follow me on there. And then if you like stuff, click subscribe, you know, that sort of thing. I always hate telling people to do that because it's almost like when you're growing up and your parents tell you to go do something and you're like, no, I really don't want to. And I just always feel like a pushy car salesman. Like, you know, you got to like my stuff. You know, if you really, if you really like me, you'll like my stuff. You know, just watch the videos. And if you like it, great. Thanks again.